Physicist Joseph Rotblatt was the only scientist to leave the Manhattan Project before the A-bomb was tested. Ten years later, he signed the historic Russell-Einstein Manifesto. It called for the end to all nuclear weapons. For half a century, including the Cold War years, he has fought tirelessly for total nuclear disarmament. He was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1995, and I am pleased to have him here. Welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, let me just do a little bit of history with you. Um, you left the Manhattan Project because Germany was out of the war. Is that it? No, no, no. Germany was not out of the I mean, war yet. Yes. But because I found out that the Germans are no longer working on the project, on their, on their project. On their project. Is that it? Was that the reason? The only reason? The only reason, because the reason why I started to work on the project, the only reason why I started to work on the project is because I was afraid that the Germans may acquire the bomb, because the early work leading to the bomb was actually carried out in Germany. And therefore, I thought if Hitler had the bomb, then this will help him to win the war, in which means that the philosophy of Nazism will then predominate in the world. Because as a scientist, it's not my business to work in making bombs. A scientist works yeah. in scientific, generally, a scientist like myself who always had a social conscience. I was brought, being brought up with humanitarian principles, felt this is not the job for scientists. And therefore, from the moment when I conceived the idea, this was months before actually we began to work, conceived the idea that it is feasible, theoretically, to produce a weapon of mass destruction, which is sort of a new, a new sort of, uh, of uh, weapon of destruction. I, I tried in, initially to put it out of my mind. I said, it's not my job, I won't do it. But despite of this, I couldn't put it out of my mind. In the back of my mind, a fear kept gnawing that other scientists may not have the same moral scruples. Yes. And, and therefore they may start to work. And I, particularly, I had in mind German scientists. Yeah. It has always been your argument that scientists are responsible for their work, and you cannot simply say, I'm a scientist, and it is not my issue, the manifestation or the consequences of the products that I make or the work that I do. That's quite correct. For many years, scientists pretended that what they are doing has nothing to do with the society. Yes. They just cut it out, trying to find out new ideas, what's going on in nature. And, and since nature itself is not affected by human emotions, therefore the scientists should also not be affected by these emotions. This has not been my, my goal. I think this, this concept of Ivory Tower, the scientist lives in a world of his own, he doesn't care what's going outside. Is, is, a, is, is, a, is in your judgment, silly? It is unreal. Unreal, right. Unreal, in fact, because whatever the scientist is doing today in the laboratory, it will be applied tomorrow. It will affect us all uh, next year, maybe. Yeah. Recognizing the morality of your choice at the time for you, do you have any guilt about your contribution to making the atomic bomb, even though you were a very young man? I should say more than guilt, I'm... Uh, I'm blaming myself for being too naive rather than guilt because I thought that if we as scientists agree how our work should be utilized, that other people will listen to us. They will take our advice. And I thought, for example, in the, in the case of the bomb, our idea was that the bomb should be made in order that it should not be used. We needed it to prevent Hitler from using his bomb against us. In other words, the concept of nuclear deterrence, I may be one of the first people to, de to, to yes. develop this con concept. And therefore, this was, I say, the naivety, because actually what happened, once we delivered, we produced the, the, the bomb, then our masters, the military people, they took over and they made the decision. To use it in Japan. How it should be used, yes. Yeah. Therefore, mm -hmm. if I may go back to your original question, therefore, it was, as soon as I find out that the Germans have abandoned the project. In fact, I didn't know several years back. The whole purpose of my being on the project ceased to exist. And this is the only reason why I, I retired. And then you have spent so much of your life, in a sense, devoted to this idea of nuclear disarmament. Uh, are we, where do you think we are in that process, in that journey? I think we are now at a very important point where we can really get rid of all nuclear weapons. We can now begin to talk seriously about the elimination of nuclear weapons. 
we had we went through a very dangerous period during the during the Cold War period. We had a nuclear arms race, the result of which the, to build up an unbelievably large human, uh, nuclear arsenal. We had something like 70,000 nuclear warheads. If you add the, the ones in reserve, about 100,000. This is 100 times more than needed for any conceivable purpose. And this shows the madness which we had at that stage, because we started off sort of the ideological struggle between East and the West, and in the science on both sides of the Iron Curtain. They kept on devising new methods to bet, make their own weapons more efficient and to make the weapons of the other side more vulnerable. And so they, we kept on building more and more. And it led to a situation where really we are, where civilization was at stake. In fact, at one point, this goes back to uh, more than 30 years ago, 1962, October 62, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, it almost had, we almost bro were brought to an exchange. And really, if you look at the history, it turns out that the whole of our civilization, the future of our civilization, dependent and hang on the decision of one man, which is Nikita Khrushchev. Will he agree or not to the ultimatum presented by the American president? And, and as the American Secretary of State at that time, Dean Russ, said, we were eyeball to eyeball and the other guy that's, blinked. That's right, yes. And what is people, people perhaps don't realize what it meant, what sort of danger it meant. It wasn't just only that, that the way we live now, our civil, yeah. civilized way, was a danger. But in fact, the existence of the human species is now endangered. And this is something which people have not yet accepted. They don't want to accept it, because it, it's too, too frightening to think about it. And that's what drives you? Very much so, yes. Because I realized fairly early in the game, as soon as I learned uh, about the dropping of the bomb in Hiroshima. By that time, I had been out completely from the project, and I didn't know anything even about the test, which had been going on a few, happened a few days earlier. But as soon as I have heard, all my fears about the future which I had came very close to reality. And I was almost in a, in a state of desperation, because already at that time, I knew that the fishing bomb which was the one used on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, was the beginning. Already then, in 1945, I knew that a bomb a thousand times more powerful was being developed. Although even at that time, I did not imagine that we should be so stupid as to accumulate such a huge number which would threaten the whole of mankind. As a scientist, are we on the verge of those people who make it their business uh, to be on the cutting edge of nuclear technology and nuclear science, are, is, are we on the edge of creating some other kind of huge bomb made out of coming out of particle physics, physics or something like that? I don't see anything on the horizon. Of course, one could not foresee what future sure. development will bring. It may be possible, but at the moment, I don't see that. In other fields, of course, it could be, in, bi in microbiology, yes. but other fields. But, in, in, but we have enough, say, in nuclear physics already, which you had to frighten us. Do you look at your life's devotion to this cause and you've been awarded this highest honor that the world bestows, the Nobel Prize for Peace, and say, I have been successful? How do you measure, in a sense, your effort? I have not been successful yet because we've not achieved our aim. Which is the I, total destruction. Elimination, elimination of nuclear weapons. I believe this is really is the objective the short-term objective, because the long-term objective is to get rid of war altogether, yeah. which may sound far too utopian. But I'm talking now about the short-term objective. And what I'm saying, we've now reached this stage when this should be acceptable by the nuclear weapon states, because there's really no reason at the present time to maintain these uh, arsenals, even though they are being reduced gradually. There's no reason to maintain any nuclear weapons, because the problems, conflicts may arise can be solved by other means than nuclear forces. To bring in a force like this to, to an ordinary dis dispute, an ordinary conflict, is, is well beyond anything which one can imagine. And yet, and yet the nuclear weapon states still maintain they need them. And of course, if they go on saying, we, we need them for our security, then of course other nations who may be, who certainly are, less secure than, say, the United States, yes. they've got even a better reason 
Yeah. Well, having to say it, well, well and, and some in the United States would argue that it is, it says some, it is a testimony to the leadership in America that they haven't been used when the United States has had the power. Well, first of all, they didn't use, they had not been used since they had the power because they couldn't really, at that time, they say the Korean War, if you take as an example. This is one case when the, the nuclear, the United it was States. Yes. Uh, the United States, not only this, but they still had the, the, the more enormous predominance in nuclear yeah, weapons. More of a monopoly. Yes. I mean, almost a monopoly at yeah. the time. And yet they've not been used because at that time, the President Eisenhower felt he couldn't do this. He couldn't do it to the people. Uh, to, to try, do again as, as, as we did in Hiroshima and yeah. Nagasaki. There was this inhibition already at that time. And later on it became sort of almost a way of life. We depend on nuclear weapons for, to, to, for our security on both sides. There's no evidence that nuclear weapons were needed to prevent right. another, right. another war. Right. I thank you for joining us. It's a great pleasure. And once again, congratulations on the thank Nobel. You.